Hello, my name is Peter, and I'm going to be showing you how to play Bird vs. Fruit. In Bird vs. Fruit, your object is to get the best score by defeating enemies, and they give you a score at the end of the game. However, if at any time your bird's health drops to zero, then you lose the game. In addition, you have start with six experience points and one dice point. Using your experience points, you're going to be buying cards from the store to improve your bird's abilities, and your dice points are used to change the rolls on the dice to avoid enemy attacks. At the beginning of each round, we're going to turn over the top card of this deck. Since it's a no enemy card, we're just going to place it in the discard pile. The next thing that you can do during a round is buy cards from the store. Since I have 6 XP, I'm going to spend 4 on the hammer. That's its cost. So now we turn up a new card from the store. And now, I choose a card in my array to discard and replace. So I'm going to take out the sleep right here, place in the discard pile, and place down the hammer. I also have two more XP, and I could buy the kick, but I sort of want to save it up to buy one of the other cards. So now after doing that, we're going to roll the dice. This is the main part of the turn. So we got a 7. So the number you roll here corresponds to one of the cards here. In this case, it corresponds to sleep. What sleep does is it gives me a dice point, and in addition, if I'm fighting an enemy, I have to lose a life. But since I'm not fighting any enemies, I'm good. So now we're going to go into the next round, and an enemy appeared. So we're going to place the tomato on the time track equal to its time value. Since it has 5, we're going to put it right here. Now, I can choose to fight an any number of enemies. But since I still have 5 more turns to do so, I'm not going to fight it yet and just let it sit there. So now I'm going to roll again. 11. So we got another sleep, and once again, we just gain a dice point. So another no enemy card. But this time, since there's an enemy on the time track, we're going to move it down one. Seven. So, after rolling the dice, you can use any number of your dice points. And for each dice point you use, you can either increase the number or decrease the number by one. So I'm going to use one dice point, and this is going to become an eight, which is activating hammer. Now what hammer does, is I get to do two damage to either an enemy I'm fighting or the punching bag. But since I'm not fighting this enemy yet, I'm just going to do 2 to the punching bag. The punching bag allows me to gain some XP after I do 3 damage to it, which I haven't done yet. So I'm going to jump a new enemy. Ooh, we got another grape. So, since I think I'm going to fight the grape now, and when I fight an enemy, I bring it forward, and I'm going to put health on it equal to its health. Since the grape only has 2 health, it's going to be sort of easy since I can use my hammer. I'll roll. Ooh, great. A 7. So I'm going to spend another dice point. Throw it, go up to an 8, like before, and don't do 2 damage to the grape. Whenever you roll the dice, you must also check the attacks on the enemy. The, however, this grape only attacks on 2, 10, and 12, so I'm safe. Since I finished off the grape, I'm going to put it on the defeated captured enemies pile, and I gain its rewards at the bottom. The grape only just gives me 1 XP, but it also gives me 1 point at the end of the game. So we have another enemy. I'm not going to fight the tomato yet, just yet, because I can still have one more turn. Ooh, great, another 7. It's pretty lucky. So I could spend another dice point to do the hammer, but I don't really want to run out of dice points, so I'm just going to gain another dice point. So I got a no enemy. So this deck consists of 10 no enemy cards and 11 enemy cards. So this is my last chance to choose to fight the tomato, and if I don't, next round it's going to escape. So I think I'm going to try to fight it. So I place 3 health on it. Ooh, seven. I'm getting pretty lucky. 
I'm going to spend a dice point to go to eight. At this point, I could do two to the tomato, but instead I'm going to actually get do two to the punching bag. So now that the punching bag has zero health, I gain two XP and two health. I'm at max health. And I place three back on it. And now that I have five XP, I'm going to be able to buy one of these cards. And I think I'm going to choose spin. Now, spin costs four XP, so I move it down one. And once again, I choose one of my cards to replace. This time, I think I'm going to put it on seven. Now my bird's a lot stronger now they have hammer and spin. And so I'm just good, it's good to spread out your cards, but for now I think seven's a pretty good number. So this carrot's actually pretty dangerous, because both of its attacks are in seven and eight, which is right where I put my two cards. So I'm just going to roll again. Eight. So this time I think I'm going to do two to the tomato. Oops, I forgot to turn up a card. Can't afford any of them. So next round, we're going to turn up a new enemy, ooh, a grape. So this carrot, I think I'm actually going to let go, just because it's a little bit risky. Because if I roll an 8, which is a retreat, it's going to automatically escape. And that's actually pretty bad, because if I let it escape here, it's going to give me some rewards. So this time, I think I'm actually going to fight this grape early. Just because what spin does is it damages all of the enemies. So if I roll it now, I'm going to get to damage both of them. Seven. Great. So I rolled my spin. Those, neither of them attack me. So I get to do one to both of them. And I've defeated the tomato. So this guy gives me two XP and also one health. I'm still at max health. And now the next round. So I have an apple. It's only at two time. So since this guy moves to zero time escapes and what happens when an enemy escapes is first I gain a dice point but then I can discard any number of cards in the store and turn up new ones so I don't really want the kick since I already have another one so I'm gonna discard it and draw one more and that's really good because I can get a peck actually I think I'm gonna save my XP I'm just gonna roll five Ooh. So I rolled a trip. Now what trip does is it's is it's pretty bad because I have to lose two life. However, like all the starting cards, I also gain a dice point. And I could, if I wanted, spend two dice points to go to a spin, but I don't really want to waste all my dice points because then I'm just leaving it up to whatever I roll, and I could roll something pretty bad. No enemy. So this is also my last chance to fight the apple, so I'll do that. Six health. So the tougher an enemy is, the more points it gives you. This guy gives me five points. This guy only gives me one point. So that's something to keep in mind. Great, a seven. Once again, I get to use spin. And this guy is dealt with. Two more XP, and I get to heal back one of my health. Not quite back to max. No enemy. So since I have five XP now, I think I'm going to buy the ambush. Actually, no, I think I'm going to get Meditate. So Meditate's pretty good because it gives me two life and a dice point. And I think I'm going to put it right here on this five, just so that I could get rid of this trip. Because it's pretty annoying. We'll slide that in. Six. Ooh. So, six is a think. And now what think does is it just gives me a dice point. However, if I wanted, I could move to one of these adjacent ones, but I don't really want to do either of them, so I'm just going to take a dice point. Great. So, yeah. Five. Alright, so I rolled meditate. Meditate gives me two health and a dice point, which is super good. I'm getting a lot of dice points. It's good to save up some dice points, because at the end of the game, you're going to be fighting the boss, and the boss is pretty tough, especially if you don't 
have any dice points. This is my last chance to fight the grape. I'll do that. Six. Hmm. I'm gonna spend one dice point. Spin. So since I got a bunch of no enemies at the beginning, it's probably gonna be a bunch coming at once. So yeah, we'll roll. 10. So that's a sleep. However, this apple has a punch on 10. And what punch means is that if I leave the number on 10, I'm gonna take one damage from the punch. I'm also gonna take one damage from the sleep. Because remember, if I'm fighting an enemy when I roll, I lose a life. So, I could leave it at 10, or I could spend 2 dice points to go down to 8. However, this guy has a block on 8. What block means is that all damage done to him is prevented. However, I could still use the hammer to attack this guy. But for now, I think I'm going to leave it at a 10 and take 2 damage. I also gain a dice point. Dice points are good. So now I move this down too. Ooh, lots of enemies. I need a little more space here. So, I might want to fight one of these right now. Actually, no. I'll leave it. I have lots of time still. Five. So, i got to meditate. Honestly, I have plenty of dice points. So I might want to... Yeah, I think I'm going to spend two to do spin. Add two to that. Two damage to those. Now, if I had chose, I was thinking of fighting one of these earlier. Which I might probably should have done, because I would have been able to do damage to them too with the spin. So now I got this guy, 2 XP, not really anything I could buy, oh I could get Peck, nah I think I'll save it. So Carrot, this is my last chance to fight the tomato, I think I will fight the tomato, it's because he's not too dangerous. However, I might, probably gonna let this carrot go, just because of those two tackles are pretty dangerous. Tackle does 3 damage to you. Ooh, 12, that's pretty bad. So. I have a trip on 12. Trip loses me 2 life, and I also get punched. Sadly, there's not much I can do about that, since I only have 3 dice points, and that is only enough to get me to 9, so I'm going to have to take those 3 lives. I do get a dice point, so my life isn't looking great. So I'm definitely not going to fight that carrot. However, I do have 2 XP, and what I probably should have done last turn is buy a peck. Now, peck only does 1 damage, but it also only costs 1 XP. Which means I can afford to put it in a spot that's not too great. I think I'm going to put it on, eh, I think, 11. That way, next time I roll uh, 12, I can like, go to it and not take that much damage. 4. So that's Eat. Eat gives you 1 health. On the other hand, I might want to go to, yeah, I might as well go to Meditate. So that costs 1 dice point. Then I get it back, and I also get two health. So that's pretty good. No enemy. So this carrot escapes. Oops, sorry. So now I get one dice point from it, and I can discard cards in the store. So I think I'll discard explosives and poison. I'll discard kick also. So I could get another meditate. I could get a heal. I could get another spin. However, this is also my last chance to fight these guys. Now, I probably don't want to fight both of them, just because, I mean, I guess I am at pretty good health. I'll fight one of them. Let's see, which one should I do? Hmm. I guess I'll take the carrot. So I'm going to let this guy go. Five health. Two. Ooh. That's pretty bad. Luckily I have a think. So think just gives me a dice point. However, I do have a few attacks here. So that would be two damage from that, and I'd also get heal. So what heal does is it gains a life, and that's sort of annoying. So I could also spend three dice points and do meditate, but that's not great either. Hmm, what should I do? Yeah, it cost me. Oh, but I gained one back. So I, I guess I'll, I guess I'll do that. So I spend three, 
Move that up to five, then I meditate. There's no attacks on five, luckily, so I gain one back and two health. The next round, this guy escapes it also. No enemy, I gain another, I get one back. I'll just leave the cards. Actually, I sort of want a damage card. So I'm going to take out heal and meditate. Actually, I guess I'll take out spin too. I already have a spin. I don't really need another one. I could want ambush though. Twelve. Ooh. So, I have two attacks on twelve. Luckily, I put this peck here, and I, I just have to spend one dice point, and I'll go to the peck. Peck just one, does one damage. Who should I damage? I sort of want to. It's sort of good to spread out your damage when you have a splash damage card. But on the other hand, if I get one rid of one of these guys, then they'll stop attacking me. So I guess I'll go with the tomato. Actually, hmm. I'll take the apple. One damage. Banana. Banana's not too dangerous. It also doesn't give me any XP, so it's sort of annoying. I won't fight him yet. Seven, great. Luckily, none of these guys have a seven attack, and I have spin. Spin is excellent in this situation. So, there's only one card left in the enemy deck, and this is the boss. So when we get to the boss, I'll explain how it works. And I could fight this guy, however, I don't know if I'll be able to defeat him in time, because when the boss appears, it appears at five, and it moves down one each time. When it gets to zero, I immediately start the fight, and all enemies that I'm fighting immediately retreat. Which means that if I don't defeat this guy in that much time, then he's gonna retreat and not give me any points or anything. And since he has four health, I'm probably not gonna be able to do that. So I'm just gonna leave him. Six. So I'm definitely gonna spend a dice point to do spin again. It also avoids this attack, which does one damage. So got the apple, only 1 XP, but I get to go up to max health, and sadly I still can't afford anything in the store. Probably should have discarded ambush too, so this guy escapes. I get another, oh, but now I can cycle to store. So I'm probably going to want to discard stuff, so I might be able to afford something, like a dodge would be really good right now. So I actually discard all of them. Actually, let's keep the hammer, I don't want the hammer. Ooh, great, a dodge. Ooh, and two books. That's pretty good. I might want the books, too. But for now, I'm just going to roll. So this is our boss, Watermelon. And he has all, he has five attacks. During the boss fight, it's just me versus the Watermelon. I can also attack the Punching Bag. And after I defeat all 14 life of him, I win the game. Unless I lose. Five. So... I could use meditate, but it won't give me much, it'll only give me one dice point. So I could spend two to use spin, but I'd use up almost all of my dice points. Yeah, I guess I'll do spin. So I get to do one damage to both of them. Luckily, I defeated the tomato now. Two more XP. So now I'm up to four. I could buy the hammer. I could also buy books. In fact, I'm gonna buy books. So what books does is when I roll it, it activates a card adjacent to it. So I'm going to place it right next to my hammer, because that's going to be pretty useful. So now basically I have a hammer on 9. I could also activate sleep if I wanted, but I probably wouldn't want to. So now the boss moves down one, I do not turn over any more cards. So, 9. So great, I use my books. Use hammer. Do damage. I get 3 more XP. This guy's pretty good. Got to turn up the card. Ooh, a peck. So what I'm gonna do is I'm pretty much gonna prepare for the boss fight. And during the boss fight, I'm probably going to want to protect myself from six with the pound. So I'm gonna buy dodge. Now what dodge does is when I roll the number on dodge, it dodges all of my damage. So basically, when we roll a six, nothing's gonna happen. I'll put it right there. There we go. Oops, sorry, these are getting sort of messed up. Now I'm just gonna roll. Oh, oops, I forgot to move it down one. 
So I can continue to damage the punching bag. Great, an 8. So I'm going to do 2 more damage to it. So if I roll another damage card, I can create another 8. So I'm going to do 2 more damage. Get 2 more XP. And on the last turn... Hmm, I think I might get a heal. Heal is going to be pretty useful. Yeah, oh, I get heal. Now I still have one more, so I'm going to be able to buy peck also. So I'm going to heal. You know, I'm going to place it on the 10. And this is pretty good because since it's right next to books, I can choose whether I want to use heal or hammer. And finally, I'm going to buy peck. My last XP. Hmm. I could protect myself from trip. And I'm going to place it right on 3. Alright, so this is my last turn before the boss. Five. Great, that's actually super good. I get a dice point. Dice points are pretty useful during the boss fight. So now, here we go. This guy gets 14 health. There's five. Ten. Fourteen. And let's go. So during the boss fight, an additional roll is I cannot buy any more cards. So if I get XP from the punching bag, I can't use it. So basically, I can just use the punching bag to give me some more health. We'll see if I need to do that. So two. That's really good. So on a two, I get to use Think. Give me one dice point, and this guy doesn't have any attack, so I get just get to roll again. Five. Meditate. So this guy has a block, but luckily, Meditate does not attack him. So get another dice point. Probably not, not going to be too hard, so remember, on 6, I put a dodge, so I dodge the pound. Okay. 7. So I have a spin on 7, which does 1 damage only, but they have a heal right here, so it evens out. So I dodge it again, 6. 3. Peck, I do 1 damage. I have no attacks on three. Slowly but surely. So I have a heal right here. And yeah, I'm at full health. So nothing happens. Two. Nine. All right, so finally I get to use hammer. Use my bucks, two more damage. 11, ooh, so he has a pound on 11. So I guess I'll spend one dice point to do heal. It doesn't heal me anything, but it avoids the attack. Nine again, two more damage. That's 10. So, I could, I could just roll again, but is this sort of an opportunity to spend one dice point and do books? So books allows me to do two more damage. Eight. So, he has a tackle here. However, if I go to books, I will be able to activate my hammer without getting tackled, so I'll definitely do that. But he's only down to five. I haven't taken any damage yet. Six. Dodge. Two more damage. Three more, and I'll win. Seven. Uh, nothing. Seven. So I have a heal. However, I think I'm going to spend my last dice point to do two more damage. And nine. There we go. We won. So the boss fight was pretty easy, but one of the reasons it was easy is I actually got a super good array by the end of the game. And that doesn't always happen. I actually have a lot of cards. I got a lot more XP than I usually do. So now that we won, we're going to count up our score. And our score is two things. First thing is all of the checks on all the cards we've gotten. So here we got five from the apple, four from the carrot, one from the grape, so we got ten there. And then here we got six. So we got 16 points in enemies. In addition, we add our remaining health. So that's 25 is our final score, which is pretty good. 
And keep in mind that the best score we could have got this round is if we fought and defeat every enemy that appeared. So we could have got like this carrot, for example. However, we probably would have lost, to be honest, if we did that. So yeah, 25. Not a bad score. So thanks for watching the video, and I really appreciate the support.